Hey everyone, it's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. I want to talk to you um, briefly tonight about uh, something that came out of CWA uh, 1180's uh, meeting. Um, and this isn't the first time I'm getting this feedback from some of the people within CWA. The last time that this came through, I actually called CWA 1180 to speak to Gloria Middleton, and I understood she was on vacation, and I spoke with a lady named Robin. Um, who I believe is the secretary treasurer. I went through this whole thing and I said, listen, you know, in your newsletter, you're painting me out to be an anti-labor union busting crazy person. I'm not a crazy person. And I think before you label someone like that in your uh, newsletter, you might want to actually talk to them to find out why they're taking the position that they are. Because then you might actually realize maybe there's actually something to the message. So um, so ton tonight I'm getting the following points and I want to address these because I think it's important because uh, clearly you're listening to your, some of you are listening to your unions who are telling you we're union busters, we're anti-labor, they're telling you we're mudslinging, we're just a small group that's um, causing them a hindrance to swift and rapid solutions, um, that they need to quickly address this, and it's the organization, our organization's fault, that they're not able to address this quickly. Um, that they don't know who to believe, they don't know what to do, and they're just following what the unions are telling you to do, the CWA is telling you, and the CWA is telling you, well, hey, just get in on this bus and don't worry about it's going to drive over the cliff tomorrow. Um, you see, I can't do that. And the reason why is because I've been down this road before. As a 9-11 responder, I'm very familiar with what the city tried to do to us. They lied to us that something bad wasn't happening. They lied to us when they told us the air was safe. They told us, just go back to work. It'll all be fine. And then when we started to get sick, they didn't want to give us health care. I fought that then too. So, um, and then the fire department of New York was trying to force us only to have medical monitoring and treatment even in retirement at the FDNY. I didn't think that was fair either. Um, even against my own unions at the time, the fire unions, EMS unions, I fought them then and won then too. The reason is, is you should always have choice of care. There were many first, first responders from 9-11 that had a choice that they can go to any center of excellence that they wanted to, that they weren't compelled to go to their former employer for care. So, Fast forward to this, I decided at that point, I'm going to try to fight this because I know the law. I have a labor relations degree. I am labor, I bleed blue. So when you say to me that I'm anti-labor, you couldn't be further from, more further from the truth. You don't understand, so it's easy to attack me or your union to say, you should attack her because she's causing all these problems. It's not just she. It is a we. We, our organization, isn't small potatoes. We're not some small Johnny-come-lately group. We're doing this for two years. If you're just finding out about this fight now, you're the Johnny-come-lately. We have researched this. We've hired lawyers. We have several attorneys, tax attorneys, lobbyists. We are a full-fledged organization. We literally unionized, for a better lack of a better word, retirees. We sued the city of New York, something some people a year and a half ago told us we could not do successfully. And we did, and we won. And the city appealed, and we won again. Now, the normal person would hit pause and say, hmm, maybe there's something to that, because there is. Your union's trying to get you to believe that we are hindering a fast resolution, but we are the ones that proposed all the resolutions. Some of the unions are saying, well, we have to do this. You must call city council because we need the code changed because the judge took away our collective bargaining. That was a lie. I contacted labor relations, contacted office of collective bargaining, asked if any of the unions lost their collective bargaining. They wrote me back and said, no, we posted the memo. 
They seem to have stopped saying that. Did your union provide you any proof that they lost collective bargaining? No. Did I provide you with proof that they still had collective bargaining? Yes. We fact check everything we say. We beg the unions to fact check us and prove us wrong. They haven't. Not one. And there's a few of them that keep digging in, but they won't prove us wrong because they can't. We said um, that this is going to continue unless the unions wake up and realize that they bought themselves a bad deal. We're not the problem. We didn't start the problem. Medicare retirees are your most vulnerable population. They're your older retirees or they're your infirm retirees. Their plans by the city of New York only cover less than 20, less than 20% of their medical bills. You tell me how they're bankrupting the city. They're not. This, the deal was is that they sold off retiree health care because this Medicare Advantage plan, and if you're not familiar with it, you should look at our one pager, which talks about the differences between Medicare and Medicare Advantage. It is privatized public health benefit. It is privatized health insurance. It, is, it takes you from, from the federal government's Medicare and your supplemental plan, which you know today, to putting you in a system that operates like an HMO, even though they want to call it a PPO, which means you would now be burdened with things you don't currently have, like narrowed networks and prior authorizations and doctors dropping Medicare Advantage plans because of all the burdens of the plans. And why did they do this? Because these plans are federally funded, which would take the cost or the expense of health care off the city's balance sheet. And the city told the unions, if you do this, we'll give you the money. That's why they did it. They told them that fund that we've been misusing, you know, that one that we use like a slush fund, the health insurance stabilization fund. Well, if you sell off those retirees into this federal, uh, this um, privatized Medicare Advantage, we'll give you the money in that fund and keep it going. What is that fund? It's called the health insurance stabilization fund. And what, is it, what does it actually provide? It doesn't provide much for Medicare eligible retirees other than, than their welfare fund benefits if they have a welfare fund. What it does provide is coverage for your actives. It pays their health care. It also pays the health care difference for, um, it pays the different, the equalization rate for your employees and it pays the equalization rate for your non-Medicare eligible retirees. And what is that? That's the difference between the HIP rate and the GHI rate, that little difference. It also funds the union's welfare funds. It also funds PICA. PICA is only for active and non-Medicare eligible. Are you starting to get the drift? And if you look in the last 2023 um, stabilization fund, uh, fiscal year 23, which started July 1, um, there's almost a billion dollars in that fund. And out of that program, they also fund some mental health things and the Weight Watcher program and some wellness things. So those are primarily things for active workers, not Medicare eligible retirees. It's not Medicare eligible retiree health care that is causing the issue. And when they say skyrocketing, uh, costs are skyrocketing, every single mayor for the last 60 years has been saying the same thing. It's not any more skyrocketing than it has been in the last 50 years. Are costs high? Yes, they are. They're always high. But the city has an obligation under the law to pay for all of our health care to one, one benchmark. What the city and the MLC want to do is change what that benchmark is so that it's no longer equal to all of us, that they can peg lower benchmarks towards some classes of people. And we don't think that's fair. And neither did the court, which is why we won. So before you get upset and think that we're attacking your union or attacking you or you're tired of hearing the message, trust me, I'm tired of doing this. We've been doing this for two years. It has consumed our life of our board and of all of our members. 
You're concerned because of an, uh, uh, a document was put out by some of these unions saying, look, look, this arbitrator gave a decision. Bad things will happen if you don't call the council and tell them to change the law. But see, we have been trying to tell you if you are part of our organization, we've educated you. To tell you that this law not only protects you and me, but it also protects city council. And someone's not telling them the truth. And you know how we know that? Because last week I met with the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. And in my presentation, we talked about different savings and different ways that they could have opted to save the city money or help meet their goal of cost savings without having to touch Medicare eligible retirees vested health benefit. The mayor's office chief of staff said to me, this is very impressive presentation and turned to OMB and said, did you know about this? And OMB said, some of it yes and some of it no. So now I ask you, if they knew about these alternative solutions, why haven't they implemented them? And the ones that they didn't know, why don't they know them? And why did they have to be schooled by the retirees? And if they did know the solutions, why didn't they impose them, implement them, talk about them, or tell city council that they even existed? Let me tell you why. They don't want them to exist. They, they fooled the unions into believing that what they, they were negotiating was in their best interest. Their bottom line goal was to destroy the stabilization fund, do away with it so you'd have no equalization and force everyone into a premium health care plan. And they figured if they told the unions you weren't going to get a raise unless you sold off retiree health care plans, what do you think they would do? How desperate are you? They just came out of two years of COVID. They wanted money. They were sold that Medicare Advantage plans are just as good as or equal to what we have now. Lots of lie. They were told that Medicare Advantage plans, that the ones that they negotiated was custom and was better than what we had. No, we've proved that in court. While the plan was able to go forward, it wasn't better, but they also couldn't force us into them. Medicare Advantage plans have been around for a very long time. They were just always an option. And there's reasons for that, because you can have no coordination of care. You can have no outside uh, PDP, private prescription drug plan. Many people, their welfare funds don't cover their medications. They can't use the high option rider if they don't get out of the welfare fund. They must have a private PDP. Under Medicare Advantage, you can't have that. We're not even going to discuss the differences with all the authorizations um, and the narrow networks and that your doctors can drop out of this at any time because we have over 500 affidavits in our court case on that. So before you get lured into a van with candy by your union, make sure you understand all of the ramifications of changing the code, not changing the code, of what the differences are between Medicare Advantage and traditional Medicare with a supplement. Because if you're still not following us and looking at what we're saying or, or saying, you know what, that girl's crazy. I'm going to fact check what she says. At the end of the day, you'd be on our Facebook page or on our email list. We can fact check and back up everything we say. Not only are we fact checked, we can cite everything where we get our facts. The Office of the Inspector General, Health and Human Services, has stated in multiple reports that Medicare Advantage plans wrongly delay and deny care, harming people's health and lives. The Government Accountability Office has also stated that in their last year of life, people leave a Medicare Advantage plan and go back into traditional Medicare. Do you know why? Because they're not getting the care they need. 
Congress Energy and Commerce Committee did a whole report on Medicare Advantage plans. Almost every single Medicare Advantage plan is under indictment by the Department of Justice, including Aetna, who's under investigation, for medical fraud called upcoding. We're not lying. And here's even the more dangerous part, and this should definitely convince you that the city is looking to transfer the full cost of premium health care to you on Medicare eligibles first. Because Medicare eligible plans, these Medicare Advantage plans, are subsidized by the federal government, if the subsidy is ever reduced, the insurer will go to the city and ask for the difference. And if they don't pay it, they will either reduce services or add co-pays. And I can tell you that for a fact for two reasons. This happened in 2017 to the HIP VIP plan, which is an MA plan. They added copays where they didn't exist, almost doubled them where they did. They carved out the drug plan, added a copay to, uh, premium to it of $125 a month, and increased the prior authorizations. In the contract with the last Medicare Advantage plan that was custom, was the same provision. So, listen. I didn't like learning that our, our district council lied to us. DC 37, we, we found lying to us. I've had many conversations with Henry Garrido over this, and they weren't crazy screaming matches either. They were pretty calm conversations, and even in groups. We asked him why he did this, because really it just takes a two-thirds vote of the MLC. And between DC 37, the UFT, and Harry Nispoli, the chair, they have two-thirds of the vote. It doesn't even matter that the other 100 unions behind them didn't want this. But Henry said he did it because Michael Mulgrew convinced him that he would go along with stepped, um, tiered hospitals. And uh, then he told me Michael Mulgrew reneged. But then Michael got the billion dollars out of the health stabilization fund for the teacher raises and leaving us hanging dry. You don't wanna hear why we're here. You need to know why we're here. You also need to know that we have presented solutions to DC 37 and they decided to turn a blind eye to them. So last week we brought them to the city. We have talked about um, issues that wouldn't harm you like adding more prior authorizations or copays, like the MLC has been negotiating. We talked about true savings, where we know for a fact the senior care plan is uh, charging the city between 30 and $50 over what they should. We know for a fact that you can get a, a single individual plan on the marketplace for what the city is paying for senior care right now. And if you brought a lot of retirees to a, a group plan, you would get better discounts. That's a large savings. We also know that, <laughs> that there are other ways of finding savings. They just don't wanna do them and the unions don't either, which is why they haven't wanted us to air them. You see, they talk about leverage and numbers and buying power and discounts, but every single union that has a welfare fund has its own welfare fund. There's no reason that they can't be consolidated for buying power. If you take, what is it, 80-something unions welfare funds, you make a very large board of trustees. You consolidate the funds. You would have immense discounts in your drug buying power, huge discounts in your premium. You would have an amazing vision and dental plan because now, instead of having a couple thousand people in it, you have 1.2 million people in it. And instead of all of us having this really crappy vision and dental plan, you'd have an amazing dental plan and an amazing drug plan. PICA probably needs to come out of the stabilization fund and go back under major medical. Maybe put a small premium on it. But it needs to come out of the stabilization fund. And the stabilization fund needs to go back to what it was intended for, stabilizing health insurance rates. They need to stop using it like a slush fund. That would help too. But see, they weren't looking at long-term solutions because you'd be shocked to know that this stabilization fund issue, this isn't the first time. This started in 2003 that we can track. 
happened again in like 2006, again in 2011, and again in 2014. Do you see what I mean by temporary solutions? They just keep kicking the can down the road. They don't want to make the strong decisions that they have to make that we've come up with. Do you know that when they did an eligibility audit, they only did it on the actives and that they found that there was $108 million in savings? What does that mean? That means that $108 million worth of city taxpayer dollars was spent on people, the city paying for their health premiums that weren't eligible for health plans, that they either aged out or something, left, had duplicate coverage, they never even did the retiree plans. And you know how we know? Because in the course of this litigation, we found that there were a few people, who, the retirees, whose spouses were deceased for five years or more. That means that the city of New York was paying premium for these people for over five years. You want savings? We found savings. You don't need to be lured into a car that's going to drive off a cliff and jump into a Medicare Advantage plan. That's going to cause you problems. We did our homework. Our organization is very large. We have self-funded every one of these lawsuits, all of our research and our operations. We're even being funded by some unions. I know you don't like the message, neither did we, but it's the truth. So, I'm asking you to put faith in what we've done. And if you have any question about the veracity of anything that we're saying, I beg you to fact check me and prove me wrong. Openly. Because the things that we have found that, that are the differences between Medicare and Medicare Advantage, you paid for your benefits, you earned them. You gave up years of wages, different than your, your private counterparts to have what you have. You shouldn't be okay with someone selling them off for their wage today. You already gave less. You took years of zero zeros. You took less benefits to have what you have. Our benefits were sold to us as you're never going to get rich, but you'll have really good benefits when you retire. And we do, as long as you don't allow them to be given up. Know the difference. Have a good night.